All right, I figured out what we was doing. We got these railroad ties walls. I guess it got put in in 87. Um, so we're gonna pull it all out, put a new one in, yank out all the plantings, redo some plantings. It's gonna be a pretty, pretty fun job, I think, this homeowner. He's cool as hell, that always makes a, Pretty big difference. Hi Johnny. Oh well, look, USIC is here after we demoed everything. <laughs> oh man, that is not That's a lot of rock. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, we doing the we're doing the equipment shuffle. Which is similar to the pallet shuffle. Oh yeah, catch that lens flare. <laughs> the more, the more I look. Uh, no, yeah, just don't look at it too close. The more stuff you'll find. <laughs> <laughs> That's like one of those uh, one of those uh, magazines that I used to read, uh, uh, where you find the object. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah like the yeah. yeah. What were those? What were those books called? I Spy. Yeah. I Spy. That's what it was. See if I can do this one handed. 
Help me. Oh. No, he says. <laughs> They're deceiving. Those, those railroad ties, man, they got all that creosote in them, yeah. Like 300 pounds. Come on. So, we're at depth, and that skid steer is loud. And this is all a really fine sand. So normally what we'll do, so we'll get to our depth, run the packer over it a couple of times, get that packed, put the rock, put a lifter rock in, pack that. But what we're gonna do, cause this is just super soft, squishy sand, we're gonna sprinkle a little of that class five on top there, pack it, and then just do a couple of smaller lifts to get to the depth that we want.
know we got some rain up here too it looks like good morning sunshine i really would like to try to get this dug out and based in oh yeah no if you want to dig out base or something yeah, I mean, whatever but then john john is a, on his way up and we'll get all of that crap yeah yeah, I, I talked to Blaine like 45 minutes ago and John was on his way to the shop and then they were heading up together or something. That's yeah, cool, snow rush. No, nah, oh yeah, that's that is smooth. It looks nice, It does look nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to unbury it a little better. Trying to unbury it a little better, he says. Alright, well, I get in a hole. Yep. Not centered, they go. Whoop. I'm ready to run. Just back straight up and we'll get the car to the Careful, yep, I'm ready to run.
<laughs> one fork in it. All right. Yeah, we're too lazy to move the fork. Yeah, gosh, that was barely 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, that's what I say. You work with good people. I mean, it makes life easy. Makes a huge difference, especially if it's the same people and you get your system down and jam it out. We all work together and life is good. Life is good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there he goes. Gosh. Yeah. No one is what else could you ask for? I'm curious. How long does it take to make uh, for you to make one like one section of those railings? Um. I average, I average about eight to nine hours per section. So you get, get, they send the stock lengths. Yep. You got to cut, you got to bevel, you got to drain a bevel, uh, prepare the joint for a weld. Um, every section gets fixed for me. So when it's here, a big problem with companies, fabricators, is they don't fixture everything. When it gets to the field, if it's got a matched bolt hole in the beam, it doesn't line up. Then you get huge back charges from the field. So if you have a crane operator, sometimes a couple of foremen, you get charged for all their time. So um, you lost money on it if you screwed up. So I fixed your everything. I put stops on, tack them on the table. Then when I get done welding, if you stand a 20 foot section up, There'll be about a four inch bow and kind of look like this wall, okay? So I put it back in the fixture, take the torch, heat on specific points on the railing, give it two or three minutes to cool, stand it up and it's perfectly straight. And um, in 27 years, I had a $56 batch charge. <laughs> um, That's was, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. because I welded some braces on backwards I called the customer I said it's okay like this like eight eight inch like four inch plate stiffener and he goes well it, it would probably work but just to be safe cut it off I'll send you new pieces I said I got the material here I'll just make new ones so I'll send them down so he sends me down new plates like four of them and I'm like I had them in stock 
So I thought he was just doing it as a favor, and he back charges me $6. But I guess, you know, in hindsight, over 27 years, it's not That's too not too bad. That whole bag yeah, in there yeah. for me. My <laughs> wife won't eat anything wild. Yeah. Oh, what? So, really? Whoa. Yeah. Okay, so these these will be in the, the fridge. Stick. Oh, okay. In there, so just go ahead and cut them open. Looks like we got two bags of them here. Snack on them. Oh, that's yeah. cool. So Heck they're gonna yeah. be in there along with your uh, nut cooty bars. You guys keep it up with that? Oh, I murdered those yeah, things. Yeah. Oh, I murdered. I murdered those. You'll spank me if you haven't eaten them. All. Oh no, I I'm pretty. <laughs> I ate like. <laughs> yep, I ate a lot and of no, those. If you want to take some of these home, take them because, like I said, the wife she doesn't eat anything wild. Oh, that's. Actually, you know what? If I could get that, uh, if I could get the recipe for those uh, nut goodie bars your oh, wife yeah. made, oh, that would be amazing. I should, in fact, I'm gonna bring. She makes another bar with M and M's. Oh, I'll bring some of those out. Oh God, <laughs> you're gonna get me fat. So, yeah. so this is the railings, just like, and right. then. Right now, come back over here. Uh, if you look at this, this is Schedule 80, so that's double wall thickness. And um, typically, the only time you use Schedule 80 is on posts. So if you have posts, say, every four feet, there's a code that says you can't have, I believe it's more, a 300-pound force can't deflect that post more than a quarter inch, I believe no, the code is. Yeah. So you can uh, either keep your post centers closer together, or you go with heavier use material. Use the thicker metal, yeah, Normally I got you. Schedule 40, which is like an eighth inch thick. This is getting close to quarter, three sixteenths to quarter. But anyway, on this job, all my years, never seen it. The entire railing is Schedule 80. So all oh. your horizontals, everything is Schedule 80. And um, I don't know if it's an engineering mistake or what. It's just a transformer railing. Yeah, uh, it's pretty cool seeing it come, come in like this and then right. what you made it into. Oh, that's now, so cool. Here's the fun part. Isn't this all the fun part? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. If you have the right tools, so I'll show you how we do some of this stuff. I should have showed Stanley there. Oh, giving away the trade secrets. Yep. Oh, he's going to, he'll, he'll see it. Yeah. Pretend they wanted me to do work for them, but they really wanted to write down the what your process uh, was. Of my machines. Uh, yeah, put a piece of tape over yeah. them. So when you're uh, doing a railing joint, you have a lot of joints like that. When yep. you see the big gap in there, not easy to fill. So this machine is a notcher, and you see the the moving dies. Yep. So. There's a tangent point on each side, so there's your first cut. Go in there, line up that the corners at the tangent point. There's your second cut. Then when you go to weld, you went from this to that. Oh yeah, oh, nice that's, tight that's fit. That's so cool. <laughs> so now the next issue is when you're doing a railing up a slope. Okay. So even if you were to cut a bevel like that, you know, going up a stairway, yep. again, you got the big gap. So we go to this machine, which is a roughing end mill. Well, I guess I got inch and a quarter in there. Look, that is a hell of a... Yeah. Dang. So we'll put this one there. So what you do is whatever pipe diameter you have, you can put that roughing end mill in to match it. We'll just take a piece here that's been pre-culped. So anyway, this is an adjustable vise, and most of your stairways are common, commonly at like 30 degrees, between 30 and 35 degrees slope. For like the, for the handrail? The horizontal, yeah. Yep. So this one I've got set at, 33 degrees so um, I'll show you how we typically do it so you start with a square end I could go directly in there now this is of course with a different die 
But I take a bite out of it just so the end mill doesn't have to work quite as hard. Stick it in there. your finished oh, build joint. Free. This is the wrong down the pipe, but you'll get the idea here. So it will be a nice tight joint again. The welding process here is, I prepare a cutting list. I go through drawings, give each, every piece on there. And sometimes there'll be 600 to a thousand pieces on in order. I give it a, a cutting a part number. He took all of us on a tour of his shop and showed us around and it's really hard to believe that Tom is actually 67 years old. He doesn't look like it, but he does kind of look a little bit like Wrangler Star. Do you guys see that? So I'll generate a cutting list and then this, what the quantity is, I give it a part number. Then I have a to-do column. That means cope, that means bevel, whatever. So as I cut the pieces, I can sort them. Then when I go to do a, a common bevel, I can do all the same bevels at the same time, do all the notching at the same time. And then just put it together at the end. So get all the pieces cut and prepped. Then this is the fab table. Like I said, I fixture everything. So these stops, each group of stops here would represent a, a post. The long horizontal piece would be up here and there would be your post. And, um, we can open up the drawings there to show you what, what the ring would look like. Oh, this is, this is so cool. On this project, that's your typical um, handrail. So the material you saw over here on the trailer, that's stock lengths. I give them part numbers, do all the prep work. Then in this case, it's nice because there's quantity six of them. Yeah. Many times you have one. Then uh, you got to refixture every time. Um, here you have six. Oh, of them. so yeah, so it's it's six of this kind, and then you got two, two of this of kind. Oh, that's I got gotcha. you. And I just the job I just shipped was identical to this, and usually I break those stops off between jobs. And I thought, no, I'm gonna leave them on. So as it turns out, these stops are ready for these six. There you go. So Look at that. So then when I get all finished welding and sanding, I then, like I said, it has the big bowl in it. Then you put it back to the table, clamp every post, clamp the horizontal on top, take the oxyacetylene torch and I heat it on the opposite side of that, um, that it had pulled and wait about three or four minutes. You know, you relax the joint, the joint cools and shrinks piece is perfectly straight oh that's so oh that's so that's cool. fun isn't it oh this is so cool my customers happy yeah yeah number one because i'm never late i don't ever miss us a due date and um the big thing is it always fits oh but yeah what would really help me too is besides being a certified welder i went back to school for engineering so i can design that i just there's not enough of me enough yeah of yeah me yeah 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 so I identified my skill set and I said, which do you love to do the most? And I said, I like to create, to build stuff. Oh, building, sitting build, on your butt yeah, all day. building for okay. sure. Oh, that's now, cool. Now, have I showed you, have I showed you the tag machine? Ah, uh, no. It looks really good. So we're gonna do Sam. So we're gonna start out in the start position here, we go two strokes and then it's just hit the numbers of the alphabet. Hit the numbers of the so alphabet. So we're gonna do Sam. S, A, M. Then we rotate to cut. That punches a hole in the end. Oh, that's cool. There you have Sam. Look at that. Sam's oh, that's cool. Name tag. Now, Heck yeah. I'm going to put that in my truck. This one is made out of zinc, so this will never rust. Oh, that's neat. Um, 
I've got another machine. I always like to have two of them in case one breaks. Yep, absolutely. So this one I've got set up with my old steel, and that's the stuff I use on my... When those railings went out, you probably saw the tags hanging on them. Yeah, yeah. So they will, will survive the galvanizing process, you know, all the forklift handling and stuff. So it gets to the job site, the guys look at that part number, they've got an erection print, it tells them where it goes. They just ma match the numbers? Yep. Oh, gosh. But, um, that's kind of cool. That is, super, that is super cool. If you want to make name tags for anything or dirt monkey tags, or we can, let's do a dirt monkey. Yeah, I'll take you up on the... Let's do a dirt monkey. So the first... Yeah, I'll give it a two, stand. He'll hang it up in his you office. You can come and use this too if you want to. So it's pretty simple, just... actually go standard monkey so the eye is going to be the number one and you don't need to press very hard this is like a spring steel so now we need to do a space so we need a space Oh, there you, you go. Dirt monkey. There you go. I'll make, yeah, I'll make sure but that gets the stand. Yeah, so then I went, I, I made this little guy here. Just a hinged plate. Smack it. I like to get the rippled edges flat. Oh, to flatten them out. Yeah, yeah. And then this is zinc, so you can rub on it with a cloth. It'll polish up nice. But, um, yeah, if you guys want to use, want to come in and make na name tags or whatever you want. <laughs> so what you gotta do, Sam, is just when you start. Oh, that's cool. When you start here, it says two. Yep. So hit that first one two times. It'll punch a hole and give you that first space. And this is shear on the end. This one here. That one. That's the shear. And that's a spacer. And oh, like the eye is the number one. But I, I bought the zinc thinking that would work for tagging my product. Yeah. It's actually too soft. So I've got 1,200 feet of this. <laughs> so you can make all the tags you want. I'll make some. I'll make a couple tags. Yeah. Oh, that's, I've oh, had, that's uh, cool. Homeschoolers stop by and look at the sculptures. Yeah. What the, and then they toured the shop because it was like a field trip for them. What they loved most was me making name tags for them. <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose too. Like with the carvings and stuff like that, they make one of these, stake it on yep. the end, and there you go. Yeah. I like. It. I like toys. Oh, yeah, this is you got some cool <laughs> stuff in here, man.
Well, I've got some sad news to announce. Uh, Blaine is actually retiring. He's gotten old enough that uh, he's just, his wife has been asking him to uh, hang it up for a while now and he didn't want to do it, but uh, I think this is officially going to be one of his last jobs. So we will be saying goodbye to Blaine and he will be moving on into retirement tough to fill those shoes. That's a big hole to fill, but uh, he was an excellent, excellent person and just an all-around awesome dude. He will be sorely, sorely missed. And once you, I mean, once you hit your same mark every time, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, 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 you only have to look at the ball. And just look well, the, the, the bowling, I mean, the bowling's cool because that's like, you know, it's like golf, you can do it till you die. Yeah. Yeah. My wife and I have been doing it for about 15 years. I don't know, I told you I built this guy. So everything you see here, I pretty much built. So when the kids were little, I built a playground for them. Uh, I made that wheel just to set around. I had it sitting over by the wall, but my wife didn't think it looked good by the wall, so we moved it. <laughs> um, these guys, of course, the crane in there, the booming for the welder I built. Um, down by the sculptures, that arch down there, all that junk I built, um, all your, those lantern hangers and stuff like that. I mean, when you work with metal, I mean, just let your imagination. Yeah, you could do whatever you, yeah, oh, that's so, that's so cool. It's so cool. I like metal versus wood because wood, wood you screw up and it's either scrap or you gotta get some glue out. And yeah, get the glue out. Metal, you just weld it back. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool.